Cajun Field in Lafayette, Louisiana. It's the Texas Aggies and the USL Cajuns. It's a few on the bayou as the Aggies come marching into Cajun country. A&M showcased a well-balanced offense with their super sophomores running the ball. And Brandon Stewart letting it fly in their season opener. Shootout loss at BYU. The Ragin' Cajuns can throw the ball as well. Jake Delhomme owns the record book at USL and threw for over 200 yards in their opener against Florida. So hang on to your hat. The Aggies and Cajuns collide next. <laughs> Live from Cajun Field in Lafayette, Louisiana, Prime Sports and Special Order Sports present the 25th ranked Texas A&M Aggies and the University of Southwestern Louisiana Raging Cajun. And hello again, everyone. I'm Greg Lucas, and we've got football for you. Two teams that are just aching to get back into action. The Ragin' Cajuns had a couple of weeks off after their opening defeat at Florida, while the Aggies, they've waited even longer. Coach R.C. Slocum, is your team ready to get back at it? We, we've had a long three weeks of practice uh, from our performance in the BYU game. We needed to practice, but nonetheless, uh, uh, three Three weeks of practice is a long time without a, a ball game, particularly when you figure you had a couple of weeks ahead of our first game. So we're anxious to get back on the field and see our guys perform, see how much progress we've made uh, since the BYU game. Both of these teams, of course, are 0-1 after the opening game. Joining me on the uh, description of the game is Bucky Richardson, former Aggie quarterback, who actually played the last time these two teams met. What do you remember about the game in 1991? Well, I remember the week before we played USL, I was hurt out with an injury, so I was very excited when USL came to town because I got to get a chance to get back on the playing field. We ended up winning that ball game 34-7, but USL did make five turnovers, and I think that, that had a lot to do with the outcome of that ball game. Well, that had a lot to do with the outcome of their game at Florida as well. The third member of our broadcast crew is Kevin Eschenfelder, and he is right down in the swamp. Kevin. All right, thank you very much, Greg Lucas. It should be wild down here. Welcome to two feet below sea level. They call it the swamp. Should be kind of crazy. Largest crowd ever to see a game here at Cajun Field, a place that seats 31,000, was back in 1990. 36,133 were here to see the University of Alabama. Tonight, they're expecting nearly 40,000 fans on hand. They're going to be sitting here on the grass all the way around. If there's a place to sit, I promise you, there will be a bottom in that seat. And if there's any indication by what was going on out in the parking lot with the tailgate party, it should be a very vocal crowd. Back upstairs, guys. Thanks a lot, Kevin. You know, let's talk a little bit about the game because not only are the fans going to be excited just being here, this is the season opener, of course, at home for USL, but the quarterbacks are a big story, not just because Bucky's here, but Brandon Stewart is getting his second start as an Aggie. Tell us about it. Well, Brandon Stewart transferred from the University of Tennessee, and he was probably the biggest question mark on that Aggie offense coming into 1996. He stepped up, had a great game against BYU. They put 38 points on the board. So he's answered a lot of questions, and coach, coaches there are excited about Brandon. There is a little bit of a weakness in the receiving core. We'll tell you about that as the game goes on. Now, there's no weakness in the receiving core or the quarterback at USL. Jake DeLome owns almost all the records. He sure does. Jake DeLome is a four-year starter. He owns the record book at USL. I think playing Florida last week will really help him get a to the kind of blitzes and defense the Aggies have this week. So I look for him to have a good game. Well, we're looking for a good one as well. It's a bit steamy, but it's going to be exciting. It's USL and Texas A&M coming up next on Special Order Sports. We're Cajuns! We're Cajuns! We're singing it, baby! We want the Aggies! <laughs> Today's college football game is being brought to you by Southwestern Bell. Count Southwestern Bell for the communication services you'll use every day. Yes, it's that simple. It's not sleepy time down south anymore. Today, the region's economy is expanding, and investment opportunities are springing up right in our own backyard. Morgan Keegan, the South's leading investment firm, carefully tracks these opportunities, finding regional stocks and bonds that are tomorrow's blue chips. And Morgan Keegan brokers know if you want to attract a crowd, you have to pay attention to details. That's why smart Southerners come to Morgan Keegan for financial advice. Morgan Keegan, capital for the South. 
September means back to school, and Prime Sports is making the grade. First, let the Strohs give you a crash course in winning, because they're graduating from the NL Central School of Hard Knocks. Next, classes back in for the college lads, and they'll educate you on the gridiron, and then hand out a few pop quizzes of their own. No hockey in summer? What school taught you that? Because the world's best represent their countries in the World Cup of Hockey. Have your sports with class in September on Prime Sports. Folks are continuing to file into Cajun Field. The permanent seats hold 31,000. As you can see, they're already starting to fill up the bank on the left. And as the camera moves on to the other side, the other side bank is also filling up. Double deck stands on the sides where we are located. As you take a look at Nelson Stokely, a graduate of LSU in his 11th year here. He's 54, 56, and 1. He was an assistant at LSU, Virginia Tech, and Clemson. He's won a couple of Big West titles when this uh, program was in the Big West. This year they are playing as an independent. They are in the Sun Belt Conference in other sports but an independent in football. And, of course, R.C. Slocum, one of the all-time winningest coaches in college football. The Aggies head coach in his eighth year, 68, 16, and 2. Only Tom Osborne at Nebraska, among active coaches, has a higher winning percentage. R.C.'s percentage is 80.2%. Three Southwest Conference titles, six bowls in his 24th year with the program. There is one of the mascots here, the chicken as the Ragin' Cajuns will receive the kickoff as we're just about set to get this one underway. Kicking off for the Aggies will be the veteran number three, Kyle Bryant. And the ball is going deep to the left corner where it'll be picked up by Mike Ellis. Ellis at the 10. To the 15, out to the 20, and he gets some running room up to about the 27-yard line. Justin Michael Williams, number 13, brings him down. That's where the Ragin' Cajuns will put the ball in play from their own 27-yard line on a good return. Michael Ellis. And as you take a look at the offensive unit for the Cajuns, Jake DeLome, number 12, the quarterback. They got Franco Smith, you know, number 82. He was in at one of the wideouts. He's going to the far side of the screen. Flanker on the near side is Brandon Stokely. He caught eight passes last week and is in motion now as we're set for the first play of the game. Down the field, it is intercepted. The Aggies come up with it, Donovan Greer. Greer comes outside the 15, down to the 12-yard line, first and 12, first and 10, rather, from the 12 for the Aggies. As the interception bug, which was a problem last week for DeLome, he tossed four of them in their last game, I should say, starts right out on the first play. Well, this is not a pass Jake DeLome wanted to throw, I, I can tell you, starting this ball game. The crowd is into it, the team's excited, and this is just a costly turnover, and it's probably going to end up in A&M points. Here we have another look at it. Just not a very good read, and hey, Donovan Greer made a great play, good interception, got it down to the 12-yard line. Aggies taking momentum early. Wide out to the top of the screen is Dante Hawkins with Brandon Stewart. There are his numbers for the opening game. In motion is Leroy Hodge. The give inside for short yardage. In fact, maybe no yardage at all. The defense is hard. Mario Stevens making the first hit. Let's take a look now at some of the players in the starting lineup for this game. For the Aggies on offense, DeAndra Hardiman, Sir Parker, they are the running backs. Leroy Hodge at a flanker in place of Albert Connell, who is not starting because he missed a class. And the Aggies do value education as the main reason for all of these athletes being in school. You take a look at the offensive lineup. He may not play. He may play. It all depends, according to the coach. Tailback, Parker. Parker is stopped again at the line of the scrimmage. The defense, Mario Stevens, again in there quickly. Mario, the right hand from Gretna, Louisiana, has been not letting people get into his territory. Now, here is the defense. Mario Stevens, Cabell, Young, Evans, they're up front. They're very good, and they've been solid. Even against Florida, they were good. Chucky Woodall, the region, is kind of a, a, a linebacker slash safety at 216 pounds. Pat Brennan, the middleman, and Kelsey Dotson, the weak side linebacker. Jackson Johnson, Mason Damon, a bunch of tackles in a couple of weeks back. And Garrett Johnson, the cornerback. It's a third down, and about 11. Hodge in motion, stopping, looking left. 
It is going to be very close for a touchdown. He's down on about the one-yard line. That's Dante Hawkins. Britt Jackson making the stop. It'll be a first and goal. Take a look at this, Greg. I know RC is going to come out and try to establish a run like he does all the time. Here's a high percentage pass, makes a perfect throw. Great effort to try to get in the end zone. Got the ball on the one first down, looking for seven points. Running back lineup now for the Aggies as Mark Boyles, 33, offset as a blocker with Tiki Hardeman, a big back. Tiki with the carry. He is in for the touchdown. So the Aggies get the first score on a one-yard run by Tiki Hardeman. Here we look. It's just off tackle to the right side. Tiki Hardeman bows his head down, gets into the end zone. And this is what we were talking about earlier, Craig, with last week, USL in Florida. Those turnovers are costly, and you just can't make those kind of turnovers when you're playing a team like a &M or University of Florida and expect to win. And Jake, I'm sure, doesn't want to make that mistake again tonight. Bryant will go with the extra point. It's strong and good, and we'll take a break with 13.01 to go in the first period. The Aggies capitalize on a turnover, lead it 7 0. There's a killer out there. Silent knock. Today, you don't hear the knocks and pings that affect your car's performance. You just lose power. So long, lost power. Hasta la vista, hesitation. Let's take this hurry north. Let's go! Feel the power. 104 Plus Octane Boost. <laughs> this is where the Aggies tailgate. Who said those Aggies don't know how to have a good time? They bring their helmets and butt heads. I don't know. I won't make any editorial comments about that. I think it's contagious. When you come across the state line over there, you just uh, kind of get the get the urge. And this is coming from a guy who was born and grew up here in Louisiana, Bucky, <laughs> in Baton Rouge, and of course played for the Aggies. A lot of Aggies in this area. Now there's a scoring drive. Four, four plays, 12 yards, took a minute 42, and Hardeman, the one-yard run. But it was all keyed by the interception and uh, Donovan Greer's interception and run back to the 12-yard line on that first series of plays. So USL, the Raging Cajuns, will try it all over again. They're lining up a little bit differently on the kickoff here. They've got one man back in the center and a couple of uh, short men. That's going to be deep, and I don't believe it will be any return at all there. It doesn't matter. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line where the Raging Cajuns will put it in play. And I think as Bucky, as you pointed out, so importantly, staying away from the ill-advised passes, uh, ill-advised plays, the key here. A lot of time left. Here's uh, Jake DeLome. He is the quarterback. And the rest of his uh, offensive uh, skill positions, Kenyon Cotton, big, big running back at 255 pounds in his line. Got a couple of big ones on the left side. Cotton slides off one and is brought down from behind and there's a flag. There may have been a tackle up around the headgear there. Larry Walker got the tackle on Cotton, but I think he had to reach too high up. You can see right here, Cotton is one of the biggest tailbacks in the country and you just can't arm tackle a guy that weighs 255 pounds. Oops. Here, Larry Walker grabs him a little high. That's pretty dangerous, and that cost him 15 yards. Our official, the referee, is Randy Personal Smith. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Randy Smith, the referee, Jim Mahan, the headlinesman, Tony Lombardo, the field judge, Mike Safrit is the back judge, the umpire, Remus Kozica, line judge, Angelo Giardina, and the side judge, Jerry Sharp. As you're taking a look at the defensive lineup for the Aggies, it'll be first down and 10. The ball moved all the way out to the 35-yard line. Again, the fake give on the play action as DeLone goes deep. The coverage is there. The pass is incomplete. Good coverage way deep. Toya Jones was staying right with the intended receiver, Stokely. 
And that's the key. The Aggies have the speed. Toya Jones, number five, uh, is the most decorated track and field athlete in Texas high school history at 13 golds, 13 silvers, and one bronze in the state high school track meets. And he can fly, and he stayed right with the receiver. He sure did. Jake DeLome stepped up in the pocket when he's that kind of protection. He's going to be dangerous, and A&M's got to get some pressure on him. It'll be a second and ten. Ball in the same location. Give goes inside to 32, Sean Guillory. Little gain. Brandon Mitchell in on the stop. Gain of maybe two yards at the most when they finally spot it at the 38. Third down and eight. That was Cotton's second carry. Cotton had 82 yards. An average of 4.1 against Florida, which wasn't bad. The team rushing yardage looked very bad, but that's because they lost a number of, uh, of yards. On pass plays, they lost 48 yards in the sacks. Third down and we'll call it eight. Three wide receivers. Now in motion is Stokely to the left side of the screen, top of the screen. Goes underneath. Going to be short of the first down. It's caught by Franco Smith, but Donovan Greer was right there, and Greer's already made his presence felt twice. This time he stops what could have been a potential first down play, but it's going to be short by a couple and a punt coming up. Well, I can tell you, AM has definitely taken abuse in the media over the last couple of weeks, and RC is pretty much challenging these guys. Hey, let's go out, play like we're capable of playing, and they're into it tonight. Into punt for the Cajuns is number 36 freshman Chris Shaw. He's having to do the honors. Mike Jones was declared ineligible by indirectly the Louisiana courts a couple of days ago, and he booms his first one, and it's a good one. That's going to go all the way into the end zone. The line of scrimmage was the 42, and he put it all the way in the end zone with no return. So his net, of course, loses the 20 yards, but he gets a good one, no return. We'll be back with a 7-0 Aggie lead. You, you, and you have the right to play sports until the cows come home. You have the right to assemble. You have the right to be equipped. You have the right to free speech. But anything you say can be held against you. That's life. Liberty. And the pursuit of the goal. But you don't have the right to remain thirsty. Not when there's Gatorade. Because every athlete has the right to be quenched. These are your rights. Now get out there and exercise them. Life is a sport. Drink it up. That's what some of the folks around here uh, have been eating, a little Cajun food. It's got about everything in it. You bet. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. Doesn't get much bigger than that either. That's, that's one pot. As we're just about set to see what the Aggies can do with the first time they've had a long field to work. Stewart's got double wideouts on the top of the screen. And Sir Parker, the lone running back. And he's in to block. The ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. May have been Mario Stevens had got a hand. It looks like, no, it looks like it was Cobble. Number 92's getting all the congratulations. So he, uh, the 6'2", 270-pounder out of Bunky, Louisiana. See the big hand here. Here you see he's only 6'2", but he does a good job of timing, jumping just at the right time and knocking that pass down. So it'll be second down and 10. This time Tiki Hardeman is the lone setback. He's deeper in the formation than on the last play when Parker was in and maybe a play change. Got Hawkins on the near side and the roll goes to the right side and a keep on the option and Stewart gets across to about the 27 yard line. He's short of the first down by three or four. He is stopped there by Garrett Johnson coming up from his cornerback spot. This reminds me of back when I was there. We got the same number. Speed option. They option the end man on the line. Brandon cuts it up. Nice gain, eight yards. Look for more of that throughout this ball game. How come they didn't retire that number, Bucky? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Third down and two. Our eye formation backfield now. The tight end in motion to the top of the screen. Parker with the carry. Parker struggles forward, and he will not get it. However, it looked like there might have been a flag thrown into the pile. Let's see. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm imagining things. He did not get the first down. Cobble was, yeah, there was a flag. I wasn't imagining things. Let's see what it was. Yeah, 
and they're going to take it because I think would it be fourth down I guess they're not because it will be fourth down or are they going to take it Let's see where's the ball yeah they're marching it back they're going to give them the third down over again and longer holding on the offense 10-yard penalty replay third down he was right. The penalty took place almost at the point where the play was stopped, so it may have been some offensive lineman trying to push or pull to help move enough yardage. It's third down and a little bit over 10. The crowd is into it. They want to stop here. Stewart's pass is... Let's see. He catch it. He pulled it up. At first, he looked like he might have caught it on a bounce, and I think that's what the argument here was Garrett Johnson. He was complete. Let's take a look at it again. <laughs> We're not going to see it. Couldn't see the ball. It whether it, Well, I think he did catch it. I'll tell you what, Brandon Stewart is really looking confident in that pocket, and he's off to a great start. It's going to be a first down. The ball is at the 43-yard line. It's 7-0 A&M. We've got 948 to go in the first period. Tiki Hardiman on the sweep. Nothing going that way. He's brought down for a loss. Kelsey Dotson, the linebacker, one of those in there. He saw several players really help string that one out. And the offense put the USL defense in a hole early in the game. That is the reason the Aggies had their early touchdown. They intercepted a pass, returned to the 12-yard line, and four plays later had a touchdown. But now that they're having to work the whole field, USL defense is showing a particular strength against the run so far. Down what could be a passing down. They're looking like they're thinking of coming. Then they back off in the cornerback spots. They don't come. Pass out in the flat right side. Intercepted. This will be a touchdown. This one is all the way. Damon Mason. Mason, the 5'9 senior from La Laplace, Louisiana. You can see here Brandon Stewart just throwing an out pattern, throws it a little bit behind his target. Coach Stokely told us yesterday in our talk with him, watch for number nine. He will be all over the field tonight. There he is, Damon Mason, making a huge play. Seven points, or six points, for the Raging Cajuns. And now the extra point will be coming up. Jeremy... Deach gets it through, and we are tied with 8.58 to go in the first. It's USL 7, the Aggie 7. It's time for the Dr. Pepper Red River Shootout. This year's game marks the 91st anniversary of one of NCAA college football's most spirited rivalries. The 1996 game represents the first time these two teams will play under the Big 12 Conference umbrella. Come see the action in the premier conference in football. Don't miss your chance to be in Dallas for the Dr. Pepper Red River Shootout, October 12th. Bucky, let's talk about this play. Remember just before the play how USL was shifting around on defense? They were faking the blitz. They moved the cornerback off the line. That worked. It worked right into the offense, as it turns out. It sure did. A lot of times those linebackers will step up in the line of scrimmage and give the appearance that they're going to blitz. They did that that time, but they came out and played zone. Damon Mason makes a great big-time play. 42 yards on the interception return. Now, he had an interception last in their last game. I keep wanting to say last week. Forgive me if I do. Neither one of these teams played last week. That's but the th kind of plays USL has to make tonight to beat these Aggies. And I I'll tell you what, that's a heck of a momentum shifter right there. Now the Raging Cajuns will get the kick off, and the Aggies will return a kick for the first time in this football game. Kick is coming on to about the 18-yard line, bouncing outside, and there's a flag. That will be an inadvertent face mask. Michael Jennings on the return, number 25, and as he was trying to spin away, it was an inadvertent face mask, but it will still be a face mask, and the question is, if they call it inadvertent, they will make it a smaller penalty. Because actually, as soon as he reached up there, he let go, but it was too late. 
That may be what they're discussing here, Bucky. The, uh, assuming there was only one flag, that may be what they're discussing. How many yards do we penalize this one for? Well, that wasn't the penalty. That was, that was what they were discussing. They were both against USL. I don't know if they'll make them re-kick here or the Aggies like the field position. Well, they'll get, depending on, actually what the Aggies are probably wanting to know, how many yards are we going to get on the face mask? If the face mask is uh, well, enough. If they, can, if they can get the ball out on the 45, I don't look for them to ask USL to kick it over. Actually, they're going to get it over the 35 no matter what. I think they're going to just play it. I agree with you. But we'll get the explanation here. Have an illegal procedure on the red. Decline. Five-yard face mask on red. Five yards of first down. Yeah, the return was good enough, and then you throw five yards. I know RC would love to have had a more severe face mask, but, you know, if, to get the extra yardage, but he's still got good field position. They're going to be out around the 38-yard line, I think. I tell you what, I still don't know how they figure out if it's a flagrant face mask or accidental. That's something... Uh, That's a judgment call. Yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with he didn't actually tackle him with the face mask. His hand got up around the face, and he let go right away. But it was, you know, it was there. Now, the one earlier, the tackle was made because of the face mask. Yeah. In any event, the Aggies will get the ball out uh, at their own 38-yard line. It's 7-7 to -7 with 8.53 to go in the first period. Home opener for USL. The Aggies will finally open at home next week against North Texas. Gives straight ahead. And Pretty good yardage there. Mario Stevens stacks up uh, the ball carriers. Uh, Parker carries got about four. Of course, you got Calvin Collins. One thing about the Aggies, too, Bucky, is their, their offensive line, uh, they lost some key players off last year's line. One guy they didn't lose, though, was Calvin Collins, the center. He's a three-time All-Southwest Conference player. He's a good guy to run up the middle with. Parker did just that. Second and five. This time, a good change of direction. He's got the first down as he runs out of bounds, does Parker, and there's a flag, no doubt, for hitting out of bounds. And that's going to add some yardage. Damon Mason with the hit, but by then, Parker was out of bounds. Let's take a look. Here you can see, Sir Parker is their slasher. He runs east and west real well. See, he bounces it outside, gets a good five, six, seven yards. Damon Mason's still excited from that interception return for a touchdown. He hit him late, and it's going to cost the Cajuns 15. And that is another mistake. The turnover early, the interception, both teams now, you can say, well, those are balanced out because each have uh, gotten touchdowns as a result of turnovers, interceptions. But penalties are mistakes also, particularly when you help a team get into scoring position, and that's almost where the Aggies are. Personal foul on the defense, 15 yards, first down. Right now, the penalty story isn't one-sided at all, but that was a key one because of the field position. For the Yankees, Leroy Hodge is wide at the top of the screen. He's got a single running back. There's the give. The play goes to Parker. Parker spins forward to about the 30-yard line. Kelsey Dotson, one of those in on the play. Dotson's a senior from McCool, and Johnson also came up. Charles, a free safety from Mobile, Alabama. Gain of three, second and seven. He was a... Just inside the knows how to win. He was on a couple of high school championships. You know, that's not something to overlook when you're recruiting football players, guys that know how to win. Chris Cole is wide to the near side, top of the screen. Leroy Hodge, both getting to play a lot and start in this game. Rolling right, pass out, is complete to the tight end, but it is good enough for a little game. Derek Spiller, but he was bobbling the ball, and again, another flag right at the 20-yard line. Spiller, who caught two in the game three weeks ago. Charles Johnson ran him out. You can see Brandon here on the bootleg. This is really a poorly thrown football, and Spiller makes a great play. One hands it, bobbles it, finally wrestles it in, and gets a good gain. It looks like it's going to be another late hit. 
They're still talking about it. Yeah, or it could be could holding be. on AM on that, uh, actually right around where the ball was. You notice the blocker. That looks like he may uh, have been what doing some be. holding. He may have been doing some holding on that. We'll get the official word here from Randy Smith in a moment. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty in the spot of the foul. Replay second down. See, that's another one. RC and the coaching staff aren't going to like us. Where it happened, the play was all, was over. Well, there, they didn't over yet, but that's the hold. 89's got him right there. You've got to have both hands inside his shoulders, and you can see there he had him hooked around the shoulder on the back, and that's a holding every time. They'll point that out to Mr. Campbell. Second down now, and nothing. Maybe a couple at the most. Broyles with the carry. Broyles out of Tyler Tyler, the sophomore. Kelsey Dotson, again, the tackle. He plays the weak side linebacker, lined up on the opposite end of wherever the tight end is. Now it's going to be third down, and they'll call it three. The ball is on the 27. We are tied at seven with seven minutes to go in the first quarter. USL in the red. That's Vermillion. And there's the first down. There's more. That's Bernard. Bernard fumbles the football, and it's recovered by USL in the end zone. So that will come out to the 20. Oh, my, a big break as a drive is thwarted. Recovered by Britt Jackson. Eric Bernard with a super run, except for the finish. There was no finish. USL has their linebackers up in the line of scrimmage. The offensive line creates a huge hole. Great effort, but you can't forget to tuck the ball in. Eric Bernard here gets a little, little lackadaisical. There's number nine again, making the big turnover. Damon I'll tell you Mason. what. Coach is right, isn't he? He knew his players. Turnovers will get you beat, and I'm sure AM realizes uh, that they've got a ball game on their hands early. It's first down at the 20. The raging Cajuns with the football. A drive is thwarted. Quick release pass out of the flat. Some running room. That's Richard, and he has the first down, and he's still going. This looks like a rugby scrum. They're still going. Down to the 35-yard line, and the crowd loves it. Here's that screenplay. This is just a crack back screen. USL does a great job of executing this play. Look at the effort here. Just for a minute, you think it is rugby. Just the pile sliding down the field. That's a great effort. It's a first down at the 35 yard line. Still in the USL territory. Going out wide is Brandon Stokely left to give inside. Nothing going. Nothing going there. Big number 99, Pat Williams, the Monroe, Louisiana native. Back in his home state with a big hit. And it's a loss on the play of about two. Here we see here, big number 99, Pat Williams, fighting off that block and making a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. That's a heck of a football play. Ball back on the 30. Throughout, he moved the chain. Let's call it a one-yard loss. It'll be second down and 11. Again, Stokely, who's been held in check so far, is wide at the top of the screen. You know they're aware of him. And also, Richard, the two top receivers. Quick drop, extra step, ball batted loose, incomplete. As the big hands got up there, Mitchell is taking credit. I think he might be right. Brandon Mitchell, 6'4", 285, the left defensive end. Another Louisiana native from Abbeville. Well, here we see big Brandon Mitchell. He went to high school right down the street, so I know he's pumped about this game, and I'm sure we'll be calling his number all night long because he's a preseason All-American. He's going to be a number one draft choice. Great football player. Alan Cannon, the sports information director at a and says, uh, Brandon has some people here in this crowd. Well, they like what they saw there. It's 7-7, five and a half to go, third down and 11. We're in the first quarter. Lom has some room. Now he's going to have to eat it. Well, maybe not. He's over the line of scrimmage, I believe. Yeah, there's a flag. It will not count. That was an illegal forward pass. The crowd doesn't know that yet. Richard made the catch, but he was over the line of scrimmage. So they'll have to give it up because they'll lose the down, and they'll be fourth down. They'll have to punt. 
What a tremendous effort. He's running left, he's running right, he gets his jersey pulled over his shoulder pads, he just loses sight of where he is on the field. But, you know, you, he comes off the field, what do you say to this guy? Great effort, barely crosses the line of scrimmage. Cost him a big play, but what an effort by Jake Delon. Illegal forward pass. So it's a loss of down, illegal Lots forward pass, uh, incomplete. Red, illegal forward four passes four of any kind result in the loss of down, so they don't get third down over, they will punt, and the Aggies will get the ball back. The Aggies drop back Dante Hall in single coverage uh, back at about the 25-yard line. And the punt will be coming up from... Uh, Chris Shaw, who boomed a good one his first time. This time, there will be a better shot at a return since he isn't going to get it all the way to the end zone this time. In fact, this one's fluttering off the side of the foot. It is going to go out of bounds early. He didn't, and if, there is a flag, however, thrown back at about the 31-yard line. And we'll see what that's all about. <laughs> Certainly because of the position of the kick, it's going to be right at midfield. If it is against USL, the Aggies will decline this one. And from where it was thrown, you would believe it was against USL. As soon as we get this sorted out, we're going to go down to Kevin on the sideline. Well, it's holding. Oh, it's against the Aggies two teams. You see USL comes off the field very fired up. This is the most important game of the season for them, whereas Texas A&M, you definitely know which team has been in this position before, and that is the Aggies. And A&M very business as usual. No matter what mistakes happen on the field, they know that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Back upstairs. Thanks a lot, Kate. It certainly is. And of course, uh, heat will take a toll later. Depth will take a toll. One thing of course, you have a traveling squad that's big enough, obviously. Uh, you can travel 60 players if you want to. That's big enough. And you're not usually going deeper than that. Let's listen in. Holding on white. Ten yards penalty. Replay fourth down. They're still going to be short of a first down because it was fourth and about 13. And so they'll kick again. This gives them great opportunity to make up for what was going to be awful field position because the ball was going to be put in play only about nine yards from where it is now. So this is a good opportunity, a great shot now for Shaw to make up for what was going to be an awful punt. And he does. He booms it. Fair catch. Taken at the 18-yard line, so that was a makeup of about 32 yards. That worked out very well for USL. The Aggies come out to put the ball in play. Don't forget that uh, if you tune in Tuesday on Prime Sports, it'll be the weekly press conference. That's right, Barry Switzer's weekly press conference. Join us from Valley Ranch every Tuesday through the regular season for reaction and post-game comments from the previous game that Barry Switzer's team plays. Here's your chance to catch the inside scoop from Barry Switzer and the rest of the folks. It's the Barry Switzer Press Conference Tuesday nights on Prime Sports, your inside track to the NFL. It'll be first down at the about the 19-yard line for the Aggies in this 7-7 game with 4 minutes and 51 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Struggle. The ball is loose. Picked up. This will be a touchdown. Charles Johnson on the fumble recovery. see here sir parker just trying to get those extra yards and does not tuck the football in 38 charles johnson picks up the fumble in for the touchdown it doesn't matter who you play or what team you are when you make turnovers you don't win usl's made one big one a&m's made two big ones the score shows you that 13-7 soon to be 14-7 usl and the kick is good, a 17-yard return by Charles Johnson on the fumble. And that's the score, 14-7 with 4.43 in the first half. Well, it's a huge crowd here, and the question that we asked uh, uh, the uh, 
The head coach, uh, Nelson Stokely, yesterday was, does he think this crowd's going to help his team? It's going to motivate us. You know, it's a great motivational tool. You know, the biggest crowd ever in history of Cajun, Cajun football. I don't think it's going to have anything to do with them. They played in front of a lot of people before. But uh, I think it's got our young men excited. The atmosphere, I think the electricity in the atmosphere around here, the people talking about a and coming to town, that certainly has an uh, effect on a young man. You know, the key to this for the Cajuns is, as you know, Bucky, you've played in games like this, particularly your old battles with Texas on uh, when you played them at home, and you, you get that crowd, and you've got that adrenaline flow. Well, the adrenaline flow doesn't last the whole game. Pretty soon, you gotta, uh, you got to go on man against man, and certainly the uh, crowd can keep that adrenaline flowing a little bit longer, but... Uh, that's why you, you want to try to jump off to a good lead early because it isn't going to last. Absolutely. You keep on making big plays like that, that adrenaline will last for a whole year. <laughs> USL's done a great job and the crowd is into it. This is not just another football game for the Raging Cajuns. And I think A&M's very aware of that now. Very short return running out of about the 22-yard line. The Aggies will have the ball to start play again. That was Hall on the short kick. So Charles Johnson, and let's give a little credit on that last uh, play, Charles Johnson, because Joseph Evans was the lineman, the, the, the left end, that really put the wrap on uh, Parker. Parker, I think the play started to fail when Parker kind of stumbled and had a little trouble getting his balance. Just at that moment, that's when Evans put a wrap on him, and that's all it took to cough it up. You love to see your running back trying to get those extra yards, extra effort, but you always remember, keep the ball secure. Do not put the ball on the ground, and that's what Sir Parker did there, and it cost him seven points. He's in the lineup at the tail with DeAndre Hardiman in the I formation, fullback spot. Fake to Parker, rolling right, the rush is on, shovel pass, intercepted, and it'll be a touchdown! Number 38, 39, Kelsey Dotson, the linebacker, and there's a flag on the play. There are two flags on the play. Hold on, USL, maybe not. Maybe not. Greg, are we still in the first quarter? I tell you, it seems like we've been up here three hours already. What an exciting first quarter so far tonight. It, I think it's going to go. Let's see. Illegal forward pass is the call, although I don't know what was illegal about it. But a holding against the defense. Now, wait a minute. Digital grounding against the Aggies. Holding against the Cajuns. We have grounding on the offense. Penalties declined. On the return, we have holding on the return team. Ten-yard penalty, first down red. All right, so they'll be penalized from the point of the infraction, but that's okay as far as Nelson Stokely is concerned. They made a big turnover. Now, my question is, I'm not, I won't pretend to be able to outthink the officials. I'm trying to think the logic through. I'm sure they're calling it exactly the way the rule book states, but if the ball is intercepted, I'm not sure. But, you know, that's almost like throwing. There's someone there that could catch it. It was the other team. And again, I'm not questioning the call. I'm just wondering about the logic of the rule. There's a quick give and inside the 20-yard line. Pickup of about seven. Donovan Greer, Kenyon Cotton with the carry. And Greer on the stop. Well, we've had a wild first quarter. We've still got four minutes and 19 seconds to go, and the Raging Cajuns are leading 14 to 7, and they're threatening again. They're one penalty away from already leading 21 to 7. Just inside the Aggie 20 yard line. Jake DeLome holds more than 25 individual passing records at this school. And he's going to try to change it. He's changing it. He doesn't like the what he sees on the defense. Gets it away in time. Lobbing to the corner. The end zone. Short of the end zone and incomplete. Well, there a little fakery going on there. Shun Horn was defending the intended receiver, Brandon Stokely, who let's give the Aggies credit here. That is one guy that has not hurt them at all yet. And Stokely uh, caught 75 passes last year as a freshman. He wears number 14. He is the coach's son. And he hadn't caught one yet. They've been watching him carefully. Well, he had a, for his freshman year, he had a better year receiving with catches and yards than anybody in college football history as a freshman. And that's, that's, right. that's something to brag about there. But he hasn't, uh, 
Doesn't have a catch here tonight. Sean Horn is watching him man on man, top of the screen. We've got a third down and three. They wanted to go man on man, but the protection collapsed. The sack is made. Mitchell comes through. Brandon Mitchell, the nearby uh, high school star, as he was not stopped at all. Now, normally that's Anthony Clement and Keith Ware, the left side, that uh, do the job holding out people, and they're big enough to. Not Brandon Mitchell this time. And so it will be a field goal attempt coming, apparently, from the 32-yard line. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. This is Jeremy Dietz. The kick is up. It is no good. And so the scoring try is thwarted. 3.07 to go in the first. It's USL 14, a and 7. Let's go down to Kevin. Thank you very much, Greg Lucas. You know, a little bit earlier, Bucky Richardson said he felt like he'd been here for three hours. This is Marty Fletcher, the head basketball coach here at USL. You like the way this first quarter's going, right? Well, if I stay in this end zone, we may score 35 points. I almost picked up that fumble and took it in myself, you, Kevin. You saw some good dribbling there. Oh, it was great. A little pickup on the uh, fumble, and we took it in for the touchdown. Talk a little bit about your ball club. Won 16 games a year ago. At three out of the last five years, you've been to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I guess you get a little bit of the feeling when people come into the Cajun Dome, because this is a great home field yeah, advantage, well, just like you get at the Cajun Dome. We do, Kevin. We have a great facility. We've got four starters back. Uh, we should have a good ball club. Of course, uh, Texas A&M, Coach Baroni, uh, the basketball squad over there, great coach. They're going to have a very exciting ball club. And uh, we've played five games against the Big 12 competition uh, over the last six years, and we're 4-1 and one against the Big 12. The only game we lost was to who? Texas A&M. Coach okay. Baroni got us two years ago, but we were able to sneak one out last I'm year. I'm sure you'll see him again soon. Yeah, but they're going to have a good ball club. They may be a surprise in the Big 12 this year. Good young talent. Uh, hopefully we can play Texas A&M again in the NCAAs this year. There you go. Coach Fletcher, we appreciate you stopping by. Back upstairs. Guy just doesn't have enough enthusiasm, does he? <laughs> wow, he's ready to go. All coaches are the same. It doesn't matter what sport. I should tell the story that, uh, let's say, some members of the staff told me about his jogging. <laughs> <laughs> he jogs, sort of, every day. Jogs or runs? There's a big difference. Well, I, there's a big difference between jogging and walking, too. And it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's enthusiastic, and he's had some good teams. On the white, five-yard penalty, the second down. Well, you don't see that very often, an illegal substitution on, the, on any team. But again, the Aggies are shorthanded at wide receiver. Errol Oliver has been suspended for off-the-field activities. Albert Connell did not start. You saw some of the numbers. Albert Connell did not start because he missed some class. And you got to give the Aggies credit for that. Also, uh, linebacker Keith Mitchell not starting because he missed some class time. Ball tipped, incomplete. And it'll be a third down. It's third and 15. Boy, I say, and we talked about it, I'm afraid not enough on the open, but the one thing that Coach Stokely came out of the Florida game was that he liked the way his defense played, even though there were 55 points on the board, and they're showing why. Absolutely. Here's Mario Stevens batting another ball. Timed it up well. It looks like Brandon is a little bit rattled in the pocket right now. He, he'll calm down and, and um, start execute. Yeah, they're giving him some different looks on defense, too. Uh, faking blitzes, dropping back in coverage. There's a pass over the middle. Oh, that could have been caught. There was The seam was open, but it was a little bit too far in front of Leroy Hodge, and he couldn't stretch out enough to get it. It'll be fourth down. Brandon Stewart had plenty of time. The open, middle of the field is wide open. This is Larry, Leroy Hodges' first start. Drop ball there, cost him a first down. Now they got a punt. So Smith drops back at about the 42-yard line to return. They get a man on the field late and in to punt for the Aggies. And it's boomed way back. And they're going to let it roll. Well, he stopped it a little early. He, he got a little excited, I think, but uh, he wanted to make sure it didn't go in the end zone. So the punt by Leckler is a long one. He had not been punting, or Leckler had been, but uh, I believe he changed his number from 19 to 6, and he boomed it. Shane Leckler's also their third-string quarterback. I tell you what, he's, he's definitely the first-team punter with that punt. He boomed that one. Puts USL back in the hole, seven-yard line. Great punt. Number 19, Shane Lecker. 
R.C. Slocum, as we said before, playing a little shorthanded, perhaps, uh, with this game. He is one position they are not deep this year, and it's sort of unfortunate with Brandon Stewart coming in to throw, and that's wide receiver. Now, we're thin at wide receiver. You know, we uh, got some young guys that haven't played there that will have to play in this ball game tonight. Uh, Chris Cole, youngster from Orange, uh, is a true freshman. And it's likely to see some action tonight. And we tried to get uh, a couple of those guys. Leroy Hodge is another youngster, a redshirt freshman that will have to play tonight. Well, they already have played. Uh, the offense has been inconsistent. And now the defense's job is to keep the ball deep in the territory. Uh, Warwick Holman made a good stop, and they lost a yard on the play. The Aggies have held the running attack in check with the Raging Cages. And in fact, the offenses have not been the story as much as the defenses and the turnovers so far. It's 14 to 7 USL leading. They lost one touchdown. It was called back on, an inter on a uh, fumble recovery. There's a short gain up to about the 13 by Kenyon Cotton. Out of Minden, Louisiana. He's played fullback and tailback, and he's got a fullback body. And the thing about him, look at him. I'll tell you, he weighs 255, but you just can't tell. That man is all muscle. Some of the young future cheerleaders here, the Raging Cajuns. Our play call comes in from the sideline. Brandon Stokely says, Dad says, run this. Actually, the offensive coordinator is Doug Furch. Baylor graduate who uh, coached in the Houston area at Klein Oak before getting back into the college ranks as an assistant. Third down and 11. They're blocking in. The pass is complete, and it is good for the first down. Mark Buford with the catch as he gets it up to about the 20-yard line. Rich Cody finally on the hit. That was well-designed play. They left some protection on the rollout. Well, this is one of Jake Delhomme's strengths. Rolling left or right, rolling left's a harder throw. I tell you what, he does a good job, puts a little touch on it, leaves the tight end, just perfect, big first down. That was a Bucky Richardson type play, a rollout and pass and a completion. Mark, just a freshman, they are deep. We talked about the Aggies not being deep at the wide receiver core. This USL team is very deep. They can run all game because they got a lot of it's a first down, the ball just across the 20-yard line, USL territory. The give to the big man, Cotton. Cotton spins off. He gets to the 30. He bangs down a second defender. There are the 255 pounds at work. Greg, we talked about it earlier. This guy's 255 pounds. He is big. You've got to wrap him up when you hit him. Aggie's not doing a very good job uh, tackling here. You got to realize this guy's not going to come down with one arm. You got to put the headgear on him, wrap him up, and stay with him, and hope all your friends come in behind you and knock him to the ground. I tell you, that man has not an ounce of fat on him and still weighs 255. There's no way in the world looking at that shot, except maybe those guns he's got there that you would ever think he weighed that much. That is a big man. It's a first down. Ball at the 35. Fake give, roll, pass up the middle. He's there. It's completed at the 49-yard line through the defense right into the arms of Richard. Rich Cody finally made the hit. Now, that was threading the needle. That was dangerous, but it worked. I'll tell you what, he does a great job of play fake and getting the linebackers to step up in the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure who's throwing the football here. It looks like he's throwing it to the tight end, which he is. Goes through his hands. Richard makes the play. Nonetheless, it's a big first down. Yeah, good thing uh, old Mark couldn't catch that one because <laughs> Donald was right there. That's kind of an unusual route, too, because you're bringing all those defenders together, and he really didn't have much room to throw. Meanwhile, Buford, who uh, attempted to catch it and couldn't, is shaken up because he got nailed as soon as he reached up for it. Well, we can take a look here why he was slow getting up. Coming across that middle, you always got to be ready to take that hit. Probably just knocked the wind out of him. Get a different angle here. I tell you what, this, these kind of hits make me very happy to be up in the booth tonight. As Warwick Holdman, who uh, said hello, Warwick, the uh, sophomore out of Aleph Elsick in the Houston area. It's a first down at the 50-yard line. Three wide outs, two on the top of the screen, one on the near side with a lone running back. That's Cotton. 
Cotton on the carry up the middle. He bangs his way forward to about the 43-yard line, a pick up the seven. Oh, the passing game has apparently opened up the running game a little bit now, Bucky. Absolutely. That left side of the line of scrimmage for the USL is their strongest point. You can see here the big guys pulling, clearing out a hole. 255 pounds of muscle up the middle. Nice pickup for USL. Yeah, and at number 79, the left guard, Keith Ware, you saw him lay the block down. Keith only weighs 350. Four guys are getting big and They're football. getting bigger and faster. <laughs> That's the end of the first quarter with USL leading the Aggies in a surprising score thus far, 14 to 7. Hi, I'm D.A. Wybring, and I'm here with Randy Smith, Royal Oaks Golf Professional from Dallas, Texas. We've put together a variety of golf tips that we think will help your golf game. It's true, D.A., and we'll have it on the putting green, full swing, trouble shots, and those little things that might help your golf game. All the way around the golf course, we really hope it helps your golf game. Hi, I'm Justin Leonard. D.A. and Randy's guidance have helped me reach the PGA Tour, and now they can help your game, too. Tips from the Top includes lessons on the golf foundations, warming up, grips, posture, and alignment. Segments on golf implementation, putting, specialty, and trouble shots. Plus, lessons on junior golf. Tips from the Top will lower your score, and I endorse it for golfers of all levels. That's right, Justin. To order this award-winning golf instructional video, call now, 800-804-PRIME. Order now, 800 800- Slow credit, no credit, bankrupt or divorced, it's not a pleasant subject, but you know these conditions don't have to stop you cold. Hi, folks, Brian Borg for Don Bones Used Car Superstore. We understand how hard it can be to reestablish your credit, so we'll help you do that today. Call our automated pre-approval hotline at 1-800-253-3051. And you've never turned down for credit reasons here at Don Bones, so come see us on La Palco Boulevard in the West Bank. Let us help you reestablish your credit today. If you don't get your quality used car here, you'll pay too much. The beauty of football on TNT is that so often a man is called upon to do something beyond his capabilities. Beautiful! And he does it. Touchdown! Oh, man! The NFL on TNT, Sunday nights. Don't miss a game. A sideline seat to NFL football action is yours every Sunday night on TNT and Cox Cable. You're watching more than just television. You're watching Cox Communications build a bright new future where television, computer, and telephone services will one day come together, giving you easy... Eight seconds on the play clock, plenty of time. Quick drop back, quick pout, dropped, incomplete. Had his man. Ball was dropped, however, by Cody Romero, the tight end. Rich Cody was there, made contact with him, but that was definitely a catchable ball. It'll be third down and three. Passing, Bucky, the first quarter, numbers were exactly even, weren't they? Sure were. Both teams had 47 yards. This first quarter hasn't been very pretty, but it, to say the least, it's been very exciting. All points scored in the first quarter came off turnovers, and that is a very, very important stat. Yeah, two of them uh, by USL directly, and then, of course, the Aggie touchdown came 12 yards after an interception. Take to the big man, roll left. Defense getting around, he's looking to throw to Lone, floats it up, hits complete for the first down. Number 86, Mark Buford, who had the wind knocked out of him a few moments ago, comes back and makes a big catch for the first down. Here's a man we haven't heard from much, Dat Wynn making the tackle. Pretty good play fake, Jake. DeLone rolls out to his left side, makes a great touch pattern. Buford already back in the game after he took that shot in the ribs. He wants to be here tonight, he wants the ball. Great catch. That win coming across from the interior linebackers side on the other side of the field to make the tackle. Normally, he'll get the number called a lot defensively, but they've been keeping the ball away from him. First down. Give to the big man. The power runner gets across the 35-yard line down to the 23. Kenyon Cotton. Warwick Holdman, one of those in on the tackle. You see Shun Horn from Jasper, Texas, the cornerback on that side of the field. 
All this is is 255 pound Kenya Cotton to the left. Yeah, behind 350 pound Keith Ware. <laughs> and 328 pound Anthony Clements. So <laughs> yeah, not, not too bad to he use. Was in, he was in pretty good shape there. It's second down and short, 39 yards, an average of 4.9. He averaged four plus against Florida a couple of weeks ago. And of course, that's a game they had to throw a lot because they were behind. Fake inside, tries to do a little dipsy do, no dipsy in the do as he dropped out behind the line of scrimmage. Jimmy Irby, number 55, transfer from Mount San Antonio College in uh, Los Angeles. What a sack master this guy was. He's drawing the start because of Keith Mitchell being taken out of the starting lineup because of missing some class. Irby had 27 sacks in two junior college seasons. Those teams that Mount San Antonio played again. Didn't like to see him. He's a senior. Third down and we'll call it three. Big guy on the carry. Struggles forward. Looks from here like he's going to be a little bit short. Maybe a yard short. Larry Walker. But they're also in four down territory if they'd like. Larry Walker made the tackle. Be interesting to see here if Coach Stokely will go for it, try to get seven points, or just take the three. I think they're going to talk about it. They see a replay decided. here. Kenya Cotton fighting for every ounce of yardage he can get. Great play by Larry Walker. They're talking it over because uh, they wanted to call a timeout to decide what they're going to do here with 12.43 to go. USL 14, A&M 7. And uh, Nelson Stokely is uh, trying to decide. Well, the atmosphere we've already seen here at uh, Cajun Field is electric tonight. And it's something that uh, R.C. Slocum knew it would be. In fact, listen to these comments, and you will see up to this point he has been quite prophetic. This football team has got a lot of talent on it, starting with the quarterback. A very good player. Uh, particularly capable of testing us in the area where BYU had some su success in the passing game. And uh, we're concerned about that, and I think it will be a good test. Coming on the road uh, in a very uh, hostile atmosphere here, they're pumped up. This is supposed to be the largest crowd in the history of the school, and uh, we'll get their best shot. And that they are. They are getting their best shot, and it looks like they're going to try shooting a little more here. This is the Swamp. Officially Cajun Field, and now to try it on fourth down, they've got Cotton in at the tailback. It's fourth down and two. They need to get to the 21-yard line. Cotton with the carry. He's got it. First down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Wrapping him up was Toya Jones and Larry Walker, but too late to stop the fourth down push. What a gutsy call by Coach Stokely. A lot of coaches would try to kick a field goal, play it safe, get the three points, but hey, he says, we've got one of the biggest crowds ever to witness a USL football game. We're going for it. We're leaving nothing in the bag. The play turns out good for him. Big first down. You can see the tight end come down. Clearing out hole for big Kenya Cotton. Big play. Larry Walker. Actually, let's give more credit to Anthony Clement. That was a left tackle. He only weighs 328, number 70. He made a big block there. It's first down. Stumble. Hand off to Cotton. Drop down behind the line of scrimmage. An excellent tackle there by, it looked like either Holt. Let's see, was that Holman 43? Or Cody, 48, and 8-3. and a three. It's Cody coming up from his strong safety spot to make that play. This, this play never got off to a good start. DeLome here gets tripped up by his lineman, barely gets the ball to the running back. And, of course, Rich Cody there, uncontested, makes a good open field tackle on a very, very big running back. Good play for the Aggies. Big Ben Archer, the center, has those big feet. It's going to be third or second down and 12. Ball back on the 21-yard line. Stokely is wide to the near side. Play action. Looking to Stokely. Ball is in the air. It is incomplete, but it's intercepted. It is pass interference, I believe. He may have been hit too soon. Sean Horn got him. And if that's the case, uh, they'll get some yards on that. They won't we'll, get enough. We'll get a better look at it here. Stokely, he's known for running great routes. He does again there, and absolutely, that's interference on number 21, Sean Horn. Another big play, big penalty against the Aggies. Sean has had a tough assignment to stay with Stokely, but he's done a great job. He has not actually caught any passes. 
the result of that one was the same as catching it, but he hasn't actually caught any. And he uh, caught eight against Florida last week, or last game, right? On the defense, spot foul, first down. So it's a first down for the Cajuns on the, looks like the nine yard line, first and goal. There's the penalty story, far too many for the Aggies. That's only in a half, not even in a half, just a little more than a quarter. That's something you see after not playing for three weeks. The timing in real game competition isn't always there. Whoa! The blocker got blitzed, but DeLome rolls right. He's trying to scramble for the out-of-bounds sideline and gets there. But a, a loss on the play as he's pushed back to about the 16. Did Kenyon Cotton get blitzed? He was blasted. Larry Walker, let's take a look at this. It's, well, Kenyon Cotton, his first responsibility on this type of play is protection. He does a great <laughs> job of blocking the linebacker there. Yeah, he sacrificed Jake DeLome said, hey, we're down deep in Aggie territory. I don't want to make a, a bad decision. Not a very good throw. Did the smart thing, took it out of bounds, and R.C. Slocum is hot over there. He's into that referee's ear pretty good. Ball is back on the 16. It'll be second and goal from the 16 now. And if you're USL, you want to get a touchdown, obviously, because you passed on one field goal. You're still in field goal range, obviously, but you got a gift. You got some free downs to try to get into the end zone. You don't want to keep going backwards. The Aggie defense is going to try to change that. Nothing. They are really keyed on him that time. That was 5-5. Jimmy Irby with the tackle, and he just laid right on Kenyon Cotton. Another loss. Well, you can see here, number 55, Jimmy Irby, he's getting an opportunity to play for Keith Mitchell. He's stepping up to the challenge, made a couple plays tonight. I tell you what, he will bring the headgear. Just got that play off time. Big time hit. Good play, number 55, Jimmy Irby. Anthony Clement couldn't get the block in time. It was his uh, block, you could see on that replay, that, to take out the linebacker, and he missed him. He got there late. So now it's third down and goal from the 20. at the one. That was the 16th play of the drive. It is not a first down, but it's fourth and goal from the one. Well, what do you do here? You did it once, although this time you've got a, a six field goal before it would have been perhaps not as easy. Well, if I was a bet man, I would say he would go for it again here. Jake DeLome gets great protection. If you give a number 12 that kind of protection, throw into number 14, Stokely, they're going to be successful, and as he does right here on the two-yard line. They're going to take a timeout, talk it over again. We'll be back, 14-7, USL over the Aggies. All my life, I've been able to counter my mother for good advice. You have to work for what you get. Solid information I can believe in. My new manuscript. Who can argue with that? There's only one place to buy a Chevrolet. I know that one. That's Bill Hurd Chevrolet. That's right, son. Bill Hurd Chevrolet does whatever it takes. That's only at Bill Hurd Chevrolet, 59 South, Sugarland, exit both ways. What can I say? Mama knows best. Well, it is 14 to 7. USL leads it. They have a fourth and one from the one, fourth and goal from the one. Already on this drive, they went for it on fourth down to keep a drive alive, and they are going to do it again. Now, here's a situation. In fact, coming in the lineup is Sean Guillory, another running back. He's a 5'11, 216 pounder from Houston Dulles. He's number 32. You got the big man, of course, Kenyon Cotton, but the Aggies know they've got the big man, too. It's going to be in the trenches, perhaps, on this play. Let's see who wins the battle. The Aggies get the ball back if they don't score the touchdown. Roll left. Throw. End zone. Touchdown. Cody Romero, the tight end. Take, 
Take a look here. Very gutsy call by Coach Stokely. Jake DeLone does a great job of faking the run, makes a perfect touch pass as we saw him do earlier. Six points for the Raging Cajuns, and they are excited here in the swamp. Beach will try the extra point. He's got it. With 9.58 to go in the first half, the Raging Cajuns are on fire. They're leading the Aggies 21-7. Golf can be a wonderful game. But to hit those long tee shots, solid fairway approaches, or to get out of trouble. Sometimes it takes tips from the top. Now PGA professional D.A. Wybring can help. Just ask Tour Pro Justin Leonard. Tips from the top will lower your score, and I endorse it for golfers of all levels. The award-winning Tips from the Top video. Order now, 800-804-PRIME. Well, we thought it would be a wild one, and it has been. Aggie fans not happy with the way it has started, but the folks here in the swamp are ecstatic. At least the majority of them are. There are a number of Aggies here, but they're hard to find with all these people with the bright red. There you see they drive a two times during this drive. They converted on fourth down, including the touchdown play. What a great drive. Great drive. That was the... Michael Jennings, Dante Hall... They were four for four on third downs and two for two on fourth downs. That's what happens when you've got a veteran quarterback like Delhomme. He has a lot of different ways to get it done. Here's the kickoff. Deach's kick is short as his kickoff has been, and they will take a fair catch. The Aggies... And a hit! That'll be a penalty, and that was an unnecessary hit. And that really was not a smart play by the Cajuns at all. That, not only did he call a fair catch, that play was over anyway. And so that'll cost him some, uh, some yardage. USL's playing with a lot of emotion right now, but they have to maintain their head, keep playing smart. That's the way you beat teams that you're not supposed to beat. These type of mistakes are not what you want. Ten ball foul. Personal foul. On the kicker, first down. Well, you don't want them, but again, the mistakes of aggressiveness are a little easier for coaches to handle than the mistakes of not concentrating. Uh, you know, offsides, motion penalties, that sort of thing. And they're a little bit easier to take when you've got a bit of a lead. Although there's a lot of game left. I think that's what's important for not only Nelson Stokely, but R.C. Slocum and all of his players and fans. A lot of game left. 9.55, and we're just in the second quarter. Brandon Stewart on the give to Hardeman. Hardeman gets very little across the 40 to 41 or so. Maybe two yards on the play. That would be it. The Aggies have not been able to sustain a running game. We thought at the outset of the game that was the direction they would go. And I think it's the direction they wanted to go. But uh, the Cajuns have done a good job uh, in keeping the Yankees from having any long runs. Two, or three, four yards, maybe five or six tops is about all they've been able to get. And not frequently. Try it again on the sweep right. Sir Parker, he's covered. They're going to try to string it out, but he uses his speed. And he cuts inside before running out of bounds at about the 47. That's short of a first down by about two or three yards. Garrett Johnson banging him out. The one thing Parker has been able to do, and he is the key, is the fact he can sometimes make something out of what looks like nothing. Absolutely. That, that gain there was done on all speed. They had Sir Parker flanked there to the outside. He wasn't supposed to be able to get around, but when you can run, like Sir Parker can run, sometimes you can turn a good gain into no, uh, nothing into a good game, and that's what he did there. So it's a big third down play. Now, USL converting the third down plays very effectively in their last drive. The Aggies, two out of four. Parker, he's got it. Turns the corner, he's at the 45. There's that speed as he runs out of bounds at about the 36-yard line, run out by Charles Johnson. And that's a first down for the Aggies as they try to move right back and get one of those touchdowns back. We take a look here. This is just zone blocking by the offensive line, and they tell Sir Parker, hey, go where you see daylight. That's what he does here. He cuts it back against the grain, goes up the sideline for a big game, big first down. Right out top of the screen. For the Aggies is 88, Leroy Hodge. 
There's Tiki Hardeman as he blasts powerfully over to the 30-yard line, a pickup of about six on the play. Hardeman, he had 22 yards, just six carries against uh, BYU. Of course, he had a big 130-yard game last year uh, in a game against SMU when filling in as a starter. Mason got the tackle. Hardeman from Galena Park, that's in the Houston area, went to North Shore High School. It'll be second down and four. Ball on the 30. Hardeman, the lone running back. He may have the first down. He is very close. Paul Cabell, the uh, right tackle. Hardeman carries near the first down. Paul Cabell on the stop for the Cajuns. Here you can see here the big Aggie offensive linemen doing what they love to do. That's run the football. There's all kind of dirty stuff going well, on in there. Yeah, there, there was one rather obvious <laughs> hold there. In fact, it was a face mask hold, but you can't see everything. And as they say, if you could, you could probably call something on almost every play. Third down and less than one. He was stopped. And Royals is in to lead the blocking, and it'll be Stewart for the first down. The quarterback keep. Ball at the 25-yard line, just crossing the 25, so the Aggies keep the drive going with 7.48 to go in the first half. It's USL 21, A&M 7. Here we can see another look about what exactly goes on in the trenches, and sometimes it's not always pretty, but hey, quarterback sneak first down, keep the drive alive. Aggies first and 10. And the Cajun 25-yard line. Royals is in the block. And out of the eye, Parker Broyles not in the block. He's in to carry the ball up to the 20-yard line. And he gets about five more. Kelly Kelsey Dotson making the stop. This is the best drive the Yankees have surmounted to this point. It has been steady and getting them four or five yards in every carry. Here we can see here, and I'm sure Coach Stokely and his staff are very aware they have to guard against getting worn down. a and is going to be a little bit deeper than USL, and hopefully USL can... Crowd can keep a minute, keep the momentum going, and hang tough in the fourth quarter. It's a second down, a long five. Here comes the defense. They're shifting at the line. Now, this has worked in the past. It has confused Stewart, and he's made some mistakes. Not this time. He goes with a handoff, and Sir Parker blasts forward to the 12. That was the key. It was a running play. Uh, he made the mistakes on pass calls when they would move the defense around at the last moment, but Charles Johnson making the tackle. It looks like here the defense is a little confused. It looks like they want to blitz and they didn't want to blitz. The strong safety ended up blitzing. Sir Parker finds a crease, gets a nice game. And it's a first down on the 12. Inside seven minutes, 21-7. USL leading, but the Aggies threatening now to get back within a touchdown. Nelson Stokely a little upset with the defense on the drive. Hodge in motion. Pitch to Parker, wants to turn the corner. There's no corner to turn. Oh, Richards! Damon Mason was the first to hit, but he had some buddies. Woodall, Chucky Woodall, number 46 is there. Also 27, Britt Jackson getting up off the pile. 55, Randy Young, they all contributed. Sir Parker says, I think I better take a break. Here you can see the USL defense doing a good job just stringing the sweep out. Keep stringing it out, stringing it out. Good play by the Raging Cajun defense. The Aggies have kept the ball on the ground. Nine plays on this drive, all rushes, 48 yards. It's second down and about 10. Roll right, inside receiver, Hawk. He's got the ball down to about the eight-yard line, and he fumbled the football! It's turned over to the Raging Cajuns! Coming up with it, well, Darren Mason caused the fumble, and you saw Cobble, the man who picked it up. Well, we warned you earlier, it's a good, exec well-executed play by AM. We told you what number nine was going to do tonight. There's another big play by number nine, Damon Mason, and Cobble recovers the football for another big, big turnover for the Aggies and another big break. 
for USL. If there is a positive for the Aggies, at least it is not in a position where they can give up points immediately, but they have turned it over five times. Remember on the Open, we talked about that has been the killer with USL. It was the last time they played the Aggies, and it certainly was a couple of weeks ago against Florida. 28 points scored directly off TOs, and this time the shoe's on the other foot. Drop back pass out of the end zone. It's incomplete, a little high. That was good coverage right on the coverage. Shun Horn, once again, he is he's really doing a great job. This time he had to pick up the tight end, Cody Romero. Here you can see here, good play action pass. I tell you, he was well covered. Jake DeLone makes a very good throw. Leads him a little bit too much, but hey, it's better to be safe than sorry. Down deep in your own in territory and surely don't want to make a mistake and throw an interception there. Smart play by number 12. Second out of 10. Aggies pretty tight on the line of scrimmage. They want to get through, but he rolls out of the pocket. The pass is out. It's complete. And that's going to be real close to a first down. On the far side, it's Donald Richard, and it looks like it's going to be just a tad short. It'll be third down. Richard out of Kaplan, Louisiana. Donovan Greer banged him down after a nine-yard gain. Here we can see number 12 just rolling to his right, makes a good throw, gets his feet inbounds, holds on the football. Nice play. He saw where his foot came down. His forward progress was very close, and now the Cajuns are going to use, I believe, their last time out here in the first half. With 4.59 to go, we'll be back. It's 21 to 7. USL leads it. The legends are coming. Don't miss the greatest stars of women's tennis as they come to Irving for the legends, hosted by Infinity October 19th and 20th at the Four Seasons Resort and Club. Tennis stars Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova, Billie Jean King, Yvonne Gulagong, and Tracy Austin will showcase their legendary skills in exciting singles and doubles competition. Tickets are available at all Ticketmaster Ticket Centers. For more information, call 800-998-1166. Nelson Stokely, the head coach at USL, has his team on top, 21 to 7, with the football, 4:59 to play here in the first half. At halftime, we'll be chatting with both of the athletic directors of the two schools, Wally Groff of uh, Texas A&M, and one of the old-time great players here, Nelson Shexnader, the athletic director at USL. That's all coming up at the half. Give inside on fourth and one. The ball is loose, I believe. The ball is loose. The clock is running. Their flag's down. They retained possession, but they lost yardage. Now they will have to punch. That win got three. It's a loss on the play. Apparently did not come loose, but the let's take a look up closer, a little closer than we are. Here, here we see just third and short. Big number, Kenyon Cotton, just trying to get a yard. Cost the ball up. Big, big break for USL there. Not turning that ball over. Marty Cannon fell on it, so they will kick it away this time. This is the first pressure punt uh, of the year, really, for the freshman Shaw from near his own end zone with 429. He needs a deep punt here to help run out the half. He gets a low one. He needs a roll. He isn't going to get it. It's coming back a little bit the other way, and now finally will be covered at about the 41-yard line. That's where the Aggies will put it in play with 4.04 to go as Shaw gets, a 40, gets it down to the 42. Well, Saturday on Prime Sports, next Saturday, you're home for the best gridiron action in the country. Four games back-to-back. -back. Starting at 11 o'clock, you got Duke tackling Army, they hope. Followed at uh, USC at Houston at 2.30. Then at 6 o'clock to the Big 12 again, uh, as we do every week, as Clemson battles Missouri. Missouri, of course, representing the Big 12. And at 9.15, hold on, because we got number one Nebraska taking on number 22 Arizona State. That's all next weekend right here on Prime Sports, or those of you watching this live on Special Order Sports, check your Prime Sports station in your region. Stewart going to go deep. It is out of bounds, an incomplete pass. Garrett Johnson was defending, but the intended receiver, Albert Connell, who is in the game now, he was uh, held out for a while. And uh, before the game, R.C. Slocum didn't say whether he'd be out the whole game or not. He just said he would not start. 
Here we see Brandon Stewart just makes a good strong throw, but I tell you, he had a lot of green grass in Ooh. front of him. He might have been better off there tucking it and running. He could pick up 20, 25 yards before he's even touched there. The only reason they may have to throw on this series is simply because of the clock. Uh, running every play, as they did last time, would take a lot of clock time. They do have all their timeouts, and now they've crossed midfield with the keeper, and that's going to be a first down. Yeah, that's the Bucky look again. The guy's a truck said, there he is again, that number seven on the option. I guess we did do a little bit of this when I was there. I tell you, this is the second time they ran it tonight, and both times Brandon has kept the ball, tucked it back upfield, and had two very nice games. So I'm sure they'll be running that same play in the second half. We're gonna have to measure this when the clock thus stops with 344. Stewart, a 6'3", 214-pound junior transfer from Stephenville by way of Tennessee, where he saw a little bit of action there. He was 34 of 55. One touchdown and a couple of interceptions as a freshman. Sat out last year, so one thing he got to do is he learned the Aggie offense, the Aggie style. He is way ahead of most people that come in from junior college or freshman because he was around for a year and he got to see what was going on. And he had a good game statistically against BYU. 20 out of 28, 232 yards and a couple of touchdowns. In fact, he thought he had led the Aggies into the winning score, but when you're playing BYU, you never know. This game, it's been a bit more difficult. First down after the measurement, the ball on the 48. Hardeman. He's got another first down, it would appear. That'll stop it again as they move the sticks. Pat Brennan, the linebacker. Now, the last two series, there have been some signs of A, either the Aggies know exactly what they want to do on the ground, or B, uh, USL tiring just a little bit, or maybe C, a little bit of both. I think it's probably a little bit of both. RC's over there saying, hey, let's go back to basics. Let's run the football like we like to do. We've got a stable of running backs, and that's what you're seeing right now. Well, he wasn't quite enough for the first down, so it's second down and less than one. Everybody's up to the line of scrimmage, dropping back a little bit. There's an easy first down. That's going to be more. Tiki Hardeman is to the 10, 5. The ball is loose. He falls on it, I believe. He may have fumbled it before reaching the end zone. It is a touchdown. I think I see a flag down on the field, Greg. Way back near the line of scrimmage at the 41-yard, 39-yard line, there is a yellow hanky. So hold on, folks. There it is. Outside, on the defense, 36-line, touchdown. You can see right here, USL defense just gets a little bit antsy, jumps offside, huge hole, Tiki Hardeman straight up the gut. <laughs> he drops the football and recovers, bounces right back up in his stomach in the end zone. That, that wasn't a drop, baby. That was Der Damon Mason swatting it away. I'll <laughs> tell you what, we have seen some football tonight. Here's the extra point. This can make it 21-14. It is up. It, no good. I'm looking for flags. I don't see any. So we got that eight-point margin here with 246. Let's take a look at the touchdown from Hardeman again. Here you can see just a great job by the Aggie offensive line there. Tiki's got that kind of speed that you like to see in a big, strong running back. Yeah, it was, it was Johnson, 19, who just banged it away, but banged it away, and somehow he got back on top of it. Nonetheless, That's it's an Aggie touchdown. Big play. That's a smart play, though, by Johnson. You're not going to stop him, probably, so you try anything you can do to get the ball out of his hands. But Hardeman stayed with it. That was a four-play, 58-yard drive, and it just took 4.04. And so now, with the 2.46 to go, it is 27-13. We'll have to see if that mixed extra point becomes a factor somewhere later in the game. Well, as often it does. Factor can change a little this year because 
you go for ties in regulation because you can go for the overtime. The formula, which if we see it, we'll explain it. Basically, it's both teams a chance to score. And so there is a winner expected. I'm glad to see that rule. I, I tell you, you don't give it 10, 11, 12 chances a year to go out and win a ball game, and you just don't want to, you want to win it or lose it. You don't want to tie. And, and, and players have felt that way for years, so I think it's good for the game. On the 10-yard line, Mike Ellis. Ellis gets it up to about the 19. It's Eric Bernard coming in, uh, working on uh, special teams. Good running back. So Ellis gets the ball up to the 20-yard line. Hardeman's run was 39 yards. Largest, longest run from scrimmage uh, in uh, this game. And in fact, one of the longest in his career. 21-13. Fresh running back, fresh legs. 21, Darren Brister, and Brister comes up across the 25-yard line. Brister, a freshman from Independence, Louisiana, brought down by Keith Mitchell, who has gotten into the game now. So the uh, the penalty phase <laughs> is over. I don't think it's any coincidence class. either. They're, they keep running to the left side behind number big 70, Anthony Clement and 79, Keith Ware, two returning starters back from last year, doing a great job so far tonight. There's Steve Brister. He's lined up with the tail. And going to be a play change. Jay did not get it away. The play clock went to zero before he made the play, got the play off. So that'll be five yards. Two minutes and four seconds. The offense, well, five yard penalty, still first down. He said false start. There must have been another penalty, but I was looking at the, uh, the game clock and he was down to zero, so they could have called that as well delay of game. Same five yards. Third and 15 for the Cajuns. And he was on our 31 yard line. 224 solid. USC, uh, UCSL has been uh, penalized now 49 yards, six times, 61 yards in the first half for the Aggies. First and 15. Play action. Out of the backfield. Cotton. Cotton brought down there by Nguyen. Dot Nguyen making the tackle after a fairly short gain up to about the 34-yard line. That's not even up to the original line of scrimmage. Only two or three yards on the play. you got to give USO credit here. They came in and knew it was going to be a big-time crowd here at home. They believe they can win this football game, and it's very evident the way they're playing. Defensively, they're trying to strip the ball, knock the ball down, scratching and fighting, doing everything they can. Offensively, they're knocking a and in the mouth and saying, hey, we're going to protect our quarterback and make some plays. Got to give, got to give USO credit. Second down and 12 with a minute six. There's the give to Brister. Brister cuts outside. He's brought down now. He, he should have gone out of bounds, frankly, because they have no more timeouts. They really are, I think, trying to run out the clock, but when you gain that much yardage, he probably needed to get out of bounds. Now, they'll have to move the change. The clocks are stopped. Right now, he could have gone out of bounds. Absolutely, and the smart thing here, no question about it, is go out of bounds. Good run, get all the yards you can. Under a minute left in the half, get out of bounds. Not a very good play there. Because now, as soon as the ball is set, the clock starts and it's ticking at 48 seconds. Originally, I don't think they had any designs on scoring again, but now, maybe. DeLome, over the middle, complete to Brandon Stokely, and the clock will again stop while they move the change. That's one way to do it, just make first downs in every play. Cody with the tackle, 35 seconds, and they'll get up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Someone lost a shoe. Someone's out there playing shoeless, I believe. Wow, what a gutsy play. 
by Brandon Stokely. He's probably the smallest guy on the field. He knew he was going to get hit. I might as well catch the football. He did a great job, took the hit, big play. Clock ticking now, 25 seconds. He throws it down to stop. I wonder who it was that lost a shoe. Well, we're going to find out. What is that? Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's an Aggie shoe. It says here, take this shoe over to one. Oh, there's the guy. Who is and that? while you're down there, go ahead and put it on for me. Tie me up. I'm get me ready big. to play. I'm too big. I can't bend over. I got all these pads on. I can't. I can't get down that low. Anyway, he's he's a he's a USL manager. He shouldn't worry about it, should he? I wouldn't think so. No, that's uh, it's Edward Jasper. Yeah, Edward Jasper. That's what the guys in the truck said. Yeah, you ought to just you just tie shoelaces together. That'd be a good good idea. But Jasper leaves the game now. Clock ticks as soon as the ball. Well, it stopped because of the shoe, so it doesn't start. That helped on the incomplete pass. There's a com well, no way. Yes, completion at the 19-yard line. And again, it's uh, it's Stokely. We're starting to see the routes that he runs. Sean Horn making the tackle, and suddenly. They're in scoring position. I tell you, a field goal at the very least. They're doing nothing special. Brandon Stokely's running 10 yard out routes. Number 12 is making good throws and hey, 10 yard gains. AM defensively has to become more aggressive at some point. Say, challenge them a little bit more and say, hey, we're not going to give you those 10 yard outs. We're going to make you throw the ball deep, throw the ball over the middle. Seven seconds. This will be the last play. They're going to go for the end zone apparently if he gets it off. He did not get. Yes, he did. No, he did not. I take it back. He waited too long. Oh, my. Absolutely. I don't even understand why the clock was running. It looked like oh, that's a good number point. 14, Brandon Stokely, got out of bounds on the last out route. All right, let's take a look at that last play. He catches the ball. Oh, yeah, the clock should have never started again. No wonder USL wasn't in a hurry. They didn't figure the clock was even running, and it shouldn't have been. I do not understand that call at all. Well, Clearly. Officials won't either once they figure out what they did. Clearly out of bounds. We have reached the half in a wild first one. You know, those of you who are with us on Special Order Sports, this one has been worth it so far. And I know if you got a rooting interest, uh, depending on who you're rooting for, you may not be as happy. But to tell you what, we got a whole second half to go. This one has been wild, and it is not going to get any less so in the second half. Wow. This, this crowd has been into it from kickoff, and they are on their feet, excited. Big-time atmosphere here for the Raging Cajun football team and the fans here taking advantage of it. Our halftime interviews uh, will later on we'll be talking with Wally Groff and Nelson Schexnader, the two respective athletic directors. And there's still discussion going on in the end zone. And let's go... Uh, Kevin's down there, and uh, he's going to be trying to talk with Nelson Stokely about the first half. Wasn't no explanation. The guy's out of bounds. He said he didn't even get out of bounds. Uh, his whole body's out of bounds. What anybody, the, anybody can see that. You got it on TV? We got it. Gee. What about the first half, though? Your ball club executed very well, handled the line of scrimmage. Well, I thought we played well until right there at the end. They started coming after us a little bit. We're very fortunate because we made some things happen when they were going in. Called some, uh, called some turnovers, made a couple things uh, happened defensively it got us some points but uh, I thought there in the second quarter offense really started moving and doing some good things Jake's really been outstanding we took it 97 yards and scored uh, and and hopefully that's gonna give us some confidence in the second half real quick coach the keys in the second half well we got to play real hard you know it's hot we're tired on defense they have really found the middle and I think that's where they're gonna hammer so we're gonna have to play really well uh, you know like we did the first half hang on and, and guys gonna have to make some plays good luck in the second Thanks. half coach. All right, let's go back upstairs, guys. Well, a wild one. It's halftime. 21-13, USL over the Aggies. We'll be back with our halftime interviews in a moment.